sell this now i'm your host steve van meter and thanks for joining me today and our lead store today morgan stanley's alarming report reveals why you need to sell this sector right now and we'll show you what morgan stanley is concerned about and why the economic data suggests it's time to dump this sector before it's too late. And are there cracks starting to form in the US labor market? Well, the political elite said no. Based on the data we have today, we say yes. Plus, we have a sponsor for today's show, Ivita Solutions is back. You can find them on the NASDAQ under symbol IVDA. And they just announced a big press release about how they're expanding their technology into the education system. Now, you may remember the last time we featured the stock on the show, in a matter of days, it squeezed higher and blasted through our upside price target. Well, now, based on the pullback, we think it's setting up for another 35% return. You you don't want to miss out on this one stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information now let's head over to bloomberg where we find out what morgan stanley's flagging as a big sell signal Global funds are returning to China's stocks, as according to Morgan Stanley, as outflows from Chinese equity slowed into the end of February and regional active managers started adding growth and tech stocks. In fact, the report comes as China ramps up measures to boost confidence in its economy. And one of the key things we can note here, it's not working at all. And to the point where China, Beijing came in and said, look, you can't sell at the beginning of the market open. You can't sell at the end. We're going to come in and buy stocks to try to prompt the market up and what did we tell you that this could work in the short term but over the long term it would all come back to economic fundamentals and everything Beijing is throwing at this is having virtually no effect as stocks now has lower and here we see the analysis shows that the shift in flows may not be entirely due to Beijing stepping in to buy stocks via the national team and could help allay some concerns over the sustainability of the rebound from the January lows. The real issue here is we see people coming in, we see some big money managers believing that this is actually a low point in the Chinese equity market. The problem is the stimulus isn't working. And it's not until you start to see a turnaround in the economic data before you actually can validate that the stimulus indeed is working and stock prices will respond accordingly. We're gonna show you why things in China are going to get far worse and that this is a signal as other people step in to buy it's time for you to get out the moderation in outflows may be an early sign that money managers are rethinking their asset allocations across the region as some funds begin trimming rival india's holdings signing excessive valuations and better risk reward elsewhere a shift that could bode well for china to regain its lost half in global portfolios and no doubt the chinese equities are down many people have sold them to begin with but if you have this in your portfolio let me make the case of why it's time to sell before it's too late because we just heard today that apple's iphone woes in china deepen with a 24 percent sales plunge now one of the challenges here is when you try to find if the market is bottoming out you want to see the sentiment is at its deepest level the consumer confidence is its deepest level and that everybody is starting to switch and one of the fastest ways you can see that is through the behavior of consumers in this case what we can know consumer in China just don't have the money to keep buying phones. The figures from Counterpoint Research add to pressure on the iPhone, which has struggled to replicate its usual success in the world's largest smartphone arena. As China's mobile market shrank by 7% in the first weeks of the year, and that's a huge indicator. This isn't just a small pullback or a shift in consumer taste away from the iPhone to other carriers, although that is an issue that's happening underneath. The broad picture here is a 7% contraction in the smartphone industry industry in terms of demand is massive. That shows you the Chinese consumers don't have money and they're choosing what they do have to spend on other things, suggesting, as we know, demand from Chinese consumers continues to crash and will make the case when that happens, 
Stocks don't go up. And while the top share went to Vivo, which targeted the budget segment, the stimulate demand, Apple's rolled out rare discounts on its web store in January, and online resellers are now cutting prices by as much as $180. And that's something you don't hear in a booming economy. You only start to see consumers shift from high-end products to low-end products, or manufacturers start to cut prices when demand is pummeling and there seems to be no sign that it's stopping. And sure enough, this is a case. We're gonna look at the US data and then talk about why this matters for China, because when you see demand going down on the retail side, as we're seeing in the smartphone market there, as we look at advanced retail sales as shown in red on a year-on-year -year rate of change, you'll note against the Wilshire 5000 price index shown in blue, as retail sales slow down, what happens? Stocks eventually start to roll over and head lower. There is a big disconnect right now, at least in the US markets. We see demand from consumers go down. At the same time, we see, of course, equities go higher. And if there's one thing that should be going higher, that's your trading account. Now, I looked over last week, we put out over 12 signals. Nearly all of them are up and some of them are up big. Today, we put out three signals to our subscribers. Those are already looking to turn higher. You may don't want to miss out. We've got a free month to get on our trading system so you can make money. No one else gives you a free month. We do. And while you're in the description signing up for that, check out our sponsor of today's show, IVDA. Again, the last time we featured it, the stock took off. Your opportunity for the next round exists because Country Garden sales now drop most in years amid wind up fears. So you look at the Chinese economy, what do we see? Smartphone demand crumbling in the first weeks of the year. Now more damage going on in the property. Developers as contracted sales for February have plunged 85% from the same period a year earlier, widening from a 75% slide in January. Talk about a decrease in demand, that is massive. The sales drought will exasperate the cash crunch for Country Garden, whose crisis entered a new chapter after a Hong Kong court last month received a creditor's petition to wind up, which means sell assets to pay off the creditors. Home buyers in China are avoiding defaulted developers, which at this point is going to look like every single one of them on concerns about their ability to complete housing projects. And what happens is when the housing market goes, what then falls with it is durable goods in the market. Well, it's very sensitive that as well. Again, back to U.S. data, we keep the Wilshire 5000 price index in blue, but let's look at the U.S. data here again, the manufacturer's new orders of durable goods. We know that the housing market is really key for this because this is anything that has a life expectancy of three years or more. And we can note that as durable goods shown in red start to slide on a year over year rate of change, well, eventually the stock market goes too. You'll notice now though, investors believe the opposite is going to happen, suggesting of course what's happening in China as their equity market heads lower it doesn't matter if a bunch of people buy into it because what matters in the end of the day is the economy. And at least here in the U.S., we're starting to see further signs of erosion as durable goods. Now we're getting the revised numbers, excluding defense in January, down 7.4%. Durable is excluding transportation, all now down 0.4%. Factory orders down 3.6%, taking out transportation, that down 0.8%. That doesn't bode well for the future of the U.S. stock market. Now, for now, because money's pulling in from all over the world, it can go. But in China's case, you'll notice that despite the fact that money managers are buying in, it's not putting a floor on this. Beijing can't put a floor on it. And if you're looking for opportunity, our reports give it to you every single week. Again, links in the description below because there's other evidence of the global economy, including China's, is in big trouble. As oil prices cool near $82 a barrel, remember, we know the kingdom needs, of course, 90 plus. As macro concerns counter OPEC plus supply cuts, just yesterday, it was all about the fact the supply cuts were going to send oil prices higher. We continue to say this all about economic fundamentals. And sure enough, crude has been on a slow motion ascent that has seen Brent gain about 7% this year, aided by strength in physical market as chunks of global shipping avoid the Red Sea amid OPEC Plus's limiting of supply. 
But that optimism, here you go, has been tempered by strong production from outside the cartel. And here's the key point, shaky demand outlook in China. So despite the fact that, of course, Beijing's coming in, trying to prop up its equity market, trying to put stimulus in, trying to save its housing market, none of it is working. And that's the key point here, is money managers can come in and try to buy this dip here, thinking it's gonna go a whole lot higher. We made the case on our Sunday show what we got out of those trades, why it's not now time for you to get out because as money flows in, what's going to happen is China's economy is going to continue to erode and down will go stocks with it. And here we can see that also includes pairing back of expectations for when central banks will start monetary easing. And when they do watch out below, rates will come crumbling down. As here you can see, the link to the energy market and the economy, particularly the global economy, is critical. We'll look at it, the U.S. economy first as the Wilshire 5000 price index remains in blue against crude oil prices. This shows us West Texas Intermediate in red. And what do we know? That typically as crude oil prices roll over and head down, well, that means stocks go down as well because it's all a sign of the economy. When the economy is booming or economy is growing, and the demand for energy goes up. So as an economy slows or even worse, contracts, energy and demand goes down. And in tune, you see stocks usually go with it. We can see that happen, of course, in the global financial crisis that even as energy prices rose, consumers couldn't afford it until that came crashing down and sent stocks with it even more. Even in 2014 through 2016, and energy prices came down. That was a hiccup for the equity market. Of course, the pandemic. And now look, you see, of course, investors just piling all over the world into five U.S. stocks, driving the indices higher. Meanwhile, the energy market and demand in China are saying, wait a minute, something must is going something bad is really going on here and this doesn't matter the fact that china is setting its annual growth target to about five percent they could set whatever they want the reality is without their housing market without their banks which are going to go next and of course as demand from consumers goes away you can point on the wall wherever you want but it's not going to happen and of course this is raising expectations for officials to unleash more stimulus if they try to lift confidence in a slowing economy the nation also set a more ambitious target for reducing the energy needed for economic expansion or what's called energy intensity this year. The reality is they're not going to come close to their 5% target because China's economy is so key on what happens around the world. And we're seeing further evidence that there is a massive slowdown. And many people said, including the political elite, that the U.S. economy was strong and robust and that nothing could stop it because its labor market was so strong here that nothing, absolutely nothing, would cause it to slow down. Well, that's changed as of now. As U.S. services growth cools while orders and business activity picks up, remember the case here was manufacturing no one cares about it anymore. That can go all the way down into the toilet. It's the services sector that matters. As long as services demand stays strong, it will eventually turn around and pull up manufacturing. We continue to make the case where manufacturing goes, services falls with a lag. Granted, it can take two to three months, sometimes a little longer. And well, cracks in the services sector have now formed. As the Institute for Supply Management composite gauge of services slipped 0.8 points to 52.6 last month, indicating a slowdown in the expansion of the services sector, the ISM measure of services employment. Here's the key thing. And we talk about employment because what happens is as new orders go away, what we see is demand starts to fall. And then as backlogs, of course, of work go away, you have idle workers standing around and employers can only keep them for so long. And here you can see that fell back into contraction, Terry, last month to 48. Now, it's not a big contraction. It's very small. But here's the fact of the matter is it started to contract, suggesting the services sector is starting to lay people off. The gauge of supplier deliveries dropped three and a half points to 48.9, the lowest since October, indicating improved delivery times. What causes improved delivery times? Well, that is, isn't the efficiency of, of course, those on the transportation industry, which is part of it. If demand is going down and fewer things are being moved, well, 
that means delivery times easily go higher. And here you can see the other impact as we talk about the employment and its impact on equity prices. Here you can see continued claims against, of course, the Wilshire 5000. And we can go back in history and note that any time you see a rise in continued claims is not good for the stock market. I even back in the 90s, it certainly wasn't during the dot com bubble. You see a near mirror relationship with that and the global financial crisis. And now again, consumers, investors believe the U.S. equity market is going to lead the world higher. But the problem is continued claims now are headed that way. And the services sector is showing signs that it is not immune to the downturn that was already started by the manufacturing sector. And as we dig deeper here into the ISM report, what do we note that, of course, employment in contraction, supplier deliveries, contraction, meaning they're getting done faster, inventory is going down. And why do inventories go down? Because there's less demand. Now, new orders have ticked up, but you'll note that isn't providing a lot of push in inventories. Prices now are starting to slow. The pace of that is starting to slow. Backlog of orders starting to slow and near contraction. That would be dangerous news for the services sector. We see new export orders slowing in a big way. That is an indication that the global economy is slowing. But there's one place that doesn't agree with the ISM, and that's S&P Global. Of course, we noticed there was a disconnect on the manufacturing side, also now on the services side, as U.S. sector reports sustained expansion here in February as output grows at the second fastest rate in the past seven months. Here we can see the U.S. services provided sig uh, signaled a further solid performance during February. Output rose for the 13th consecutive month and the rate of growth falling only slightly from January's seven month high. New business inflows are now risen for four straight months as total new order growth nonetheless slipped to the weakest in three months as new business from abroad dipped back into contraction territory. So what we're seeing here is a sort of a little renaissance in the U.S. side of the economy, maybe just a brief one while the rest of the world slows down in a big way. Pressure on capacity dissipated as backlogs of work fell. This would suggest that employment is going to go with it, aided by a further rise in employment, but that will not last for long. S&P Global came in at 52.3, down slightly from last month, suggesting that the services sector is on pace to continue its trend. But get this, softer demand conditions also lend to dampened expectations regarding activity over the coming year as service sectors firms recorded the lowest level of optimism for three months and only one that was historically muted. Weighing on business confidence were reports of reduced purchasing power at customers and efforts to cut costs. Of course, the biggest cost-cutting measure is going to be employees and followed by automation. And one company that's leading the trend in automation in the security industry is Ivita Solutions with their impressive technology. Let's take a look. All the information in the pinned comment description below, because remember, the last time we featured them on the show, this thinly traded stock just went vertical. It's pulling back right now. We'll show you the charts and what could be another setup for a big move, 35%. It'll be a huge boost for your portfolio. They're an AI video platform making it easy to search, manage, manage, analyze, and secure as Ivita sells AI-powered safety technology to Pinion Unified School District. Again, on the NASDAQ, on the symbol IVDA. And here you can see they are going in with an exclusive agreement with the Pinion Unified School District located on the Navajo Nation Reservation in Pinion, Arizona, to effectively equip three school campuses with AI-powered surveillance technology. And they'll use the data from 11 of the district existing cameras to intelligently monitor and alert for un authorized intruders smoke and fire on campus traffic flow issues as well as facial and license plate recognition this could allow their technology at Ivita allows a school district to be quickly notified analyze and report situations on campus from video data to locate track and isolate threats this is a big deal because as of course budgets tighten up more companies will be looking to technology to solve their problems Ivita is a leader in this space as schools around the country are turning to Ivita to help keep their students and staff safe. That will drive, of course, more sales, more revenue, and more profits, and their stock price potentially higher. Through the power of AI, we can accurately monitor our nation's campuses by adding an extra layer of protection so students can focus on what matters most, 
receiving a top-notch education. This is a big deal. And as their schools continue to grow, there's never been a more pivotal time for Pinyon Unified School District to up-level its on-campus surveillance system. And of course, this follows the 2023 beta testing of IVITA school safety surveillance systems with the Tempe Preparatory Academy, which allowed the school to implement IV to AI into existing cameras, meeting the need for preventive surveillance solutions. And again, one thing that we now believe is going to be a huge boost to your portfolio is IV to stock, because what's key here is it's very thinly traded and any massive push in buyers sends the stock to the roof. The higher it goes up, the more attention it gets. We'll show you a setup here now of a potential 35% gain that's coming on the back of already a massive gain. Now you may remember we came back in at levels right around here in the last time they had on the show and we said i said it would likely get in the 90 cent range well blasted through that all the way up to a dollar 24 here you can see on the one year chart there's a volume profile line setting up where the sellers are at and what happens here is you see this pullback and what looks like a bullish flag scenario as sellers come in drive prices down and what we're seeing today is buyers are already stepping in to pick these shares up as these sellers are going away and you'll notice over the last 30 days here you notice the volume profile line very distinct here and that means any opportunity in the supply zone around 90 cents could create a 35 up percent upside return as a stock looks to make a big move back to that dollar 24 range or potentially even higher and with that of course as we like to mention you're under no obligation to purchase the stock or shares of any company we feature on the show you want to be sure to do your own research before placing any trades with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now